So where we begin is we look at this and we're looking for angles that are solutions. Angles that if I put them in here, will make this equation work, okay? So that's why the first thing I look for is a base angle, okay? To find out the base angle, I don't worry about the sign, I look at that, and I think tan of some angle is one. Now, this is a nice number, I've given, I'm st sticking with the nice numbers. So you may know this number off the top of your head, but if you don't, what do you do? You reach for your calculator, and in this case, in your calculator, you're going to, whoops, you're gonna put in this. Right? So you go shift, tan, you pop in this value here without the plus or minus, and you get what angle? 45. Okay, to find out the base angle, the base angle is an acute angle. Um, it's, it's small, it's from 0 to 90, okay? Now, if I want the acute angle, then sine and cos and tan, do you see what that, remember what the A stands for? What does A stand for? Or, oh. oh, sine, <laughs> it sort of stands for acute. Sine and cos and tan are all positive in this quadrant up here. So that's why we have to think about the positive number because I want the small angle that comes up here. I'm going to come back to why we do this and how much of this you need to understand versus how much you're going to do. I will come back to that at the end of this. So remind me, okay? You've got the base angle now, it's 45. What do I do with this base angle? What, what, what follows this little phrase that I've begun here? Tan x is has a minus sign on it, so tan x is negative. What that means is you can identify the quadrants where you have solutions. And by the way, I, um, I realized um, on looking at my video yesterday, I forgot to do this. It's probably a good idea since we're talking about quadrants, just to write the letter Q. That indicates, because I'm going to put two numbers here, right? That indicates I'm talking about quadrant this and quadrant that. So maybe you want to start doing that just like I am. One, two, three, four, which quadrants has negative tan? This is one, two, three, four. Two's good, and four is good. Two and four. Okay, two and four. Are you with me so far? Did you see why I did this? Was that part okay? Okay, so, yeah, 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 so let me explain. Shh, shh, shh. So this comes down to understanding what this diagram means. Okay, let me just get rid of these numbers for a second. The A and the S and the T and the C, what they refer to is, hey, which of these trig functions is positive in which quadrant, okay? So for example, in the first quadrant, sine of any angle in there, cos of any angle in there, and tan of any angle in there, you'll always get a positive, okay? If you come over to the second quadrant, if you have angles between what and what? Between 90 and 180 degrees, um, pick an angle, any angle between 90 and 180. Give, give me an example. 150 is what I heard. Okay, 150. If you type in, go, you got your calculator there, type in cos 150. Go ahead. What you should notice is it's a, it's a negative number, right? Mm -hmm. Negative zero point blah 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 blah. Try tan 150 now. What's that? Negative. It's negative, uh, what is it actually? 0.5, blah, 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 right? Both of them are negative, but if you do sine of 150, I think you'll actually get a half, is that correct? No. Sine is the only one that's positive, the other two are negative, okay? So I can keep on going around the quadrants. In this third quadrant, um, what's the angles? From 180 to 270, only 10 is positive, if you picked a random angle from 180 to 270, right? Sine and cos will both be negative, okay? And then in this last quadrant here, only cos is positive, sine and tan are negative, okay? So if I want to find out where tan is negative, I eliminate the places where tan is positive. Tan's positive up there, and it's positive here. So it leaves me with quadrant two and quadrant four. How's that fitting with your brain? Is that okay? Is that a little better? Okay, now we're about to write the answer out. I'm in quadrant two and I'm in quadrant four. I might actually put in an extra line of working in here just so we can see what's going on. In quadrant two, we have obtuse angles, right? So every single one is 180 degrees take away what? 45. The base angle, which in this case is 45. What about in quadrant four? How do you get angles in this corner? 360 take away. Okay, does that make sense? So I can now evaluate what these are. Uh, that's 135, and that's 
315. Is that okay? Of course, you've got your calculator there. So if you punch in 10 of 135 um, or 10 of 315, you should get the same negative one. Is that okay? That's all right. Okay. Help me out. Let's do B together. I'm looking for a base angle. Root 3 on 2, root 3 on 2, root 3 on 2. That's 60 degrees. 60 degrees. Okay. It's 60. You can go ahead and you can try it. You can put in sine inverse of. Yep. You don't worry about the negative to find the base angle. Okay. Now what's my next step? I'm worried about the plus or minus of sine. So I'm going to say sine x is it's negative. So I need to, because I destroyed my quadrant diagram up there, we're just going to draw another one. Where is sine negative? Three and four. Three and four. Quadrant three, quadrant four. Okay. So now I need to work out what does the base angle 60, what does it look like in quadrant three and quadrant four? What's x? Okay, here in quadrant three, it's 180 plus 60. Very good. Okay. No, it doesn't, because you get a different angle. You get a different angle. Okay. You need to remember. At this point, you need to remember. Okay. Absolutely, you would. Just like if I asked you to solve this equation, and you only told me that x is equal to five and not negative five. Uh, then, yeah, you haven't gotten the whole solution. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Same deal here. Um, quadrant 4, we just did this. Quadrant 4 is 360 take away. Okay, so our two answers. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs>